this is Dinah Winnick. I'm Acting Director of Communications in UMBC's Office of Institutional Advancement, and I'm here today with two members of the UMBC community whose work is an incredible example of engaged scholarship. Uh, today with me are Lee Blaney and Dalton Hughes. Could you each introduce yourselves? Sure, so I'm Lee Blaney. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical, Biochemical, and Environmental Engineering. Yeah, and my name is Dalton Hughes. I am a senior in chemical engineering. So yeah. for folks who don't have an engineering background, could you just briefly explain what this field's all about? Sure. So environmental engineering, um, which is my specialty area, I always tell people, you know, I'm very much water focused. And I tell people environmental engineering at its heart is very simple. When you open the faucet on your sink, I make sure that water's safe for you to drink. And when you flush your water down the toilet, I make sure that water's safe for the environment. And Maybe I'll turn it over to Dalton to explain chemical engineering. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess from the student standpoint, the, the Department of Chemical Engineering really is a wide range of topics from experimental sciences, such as physics, um, up to the life sciences. And we get a little bit of information, such as mathematics and economics, to really understand what is going on in a processing plant and how to really build one from the ground up. So today I really wanted to talk about this water project that you have in Isongo, Kenya. And uh, I know that it received a Breaking Ground grant, but could you tell me a little bit about how the project got started? Sure. Um, so I think maybe if I just back up a little bit for a second, um, you know, at the heart of it, environmental engineering, like I mentioned, is focused on water and wastewater treatment. And I think in the developed world where we live, in the developing world, there are two very different realities. You know, so for us, it's very easy to go to our kitchen, and get some nice clean water to drink. In Asongo, Kenya, where we're working with our Engineers Without Borders project, it's a much trickier picture where you actually have to go to a spring and collect your water. And there's no you know, reality of whether or not that water is safe to drink. Um, <clears throat> the project that we're working on in Asongo, the people are collecting their water from what we call an unprotected spring. And so an unprotected spring is essentially a spot where water seeps out of the ground people collect that water, take that home to use for drinking, for cooking, for washing, for all purposes. Um, and so I think, you know, it's very interesting to think about the state of our water infrastructure here, where it's very easy and it's very kind of in the back of our minds, but we don't think about it very often. But in Kenya, you know, it's a reality that takes a lot of time each day and it's a lot of hardship on people. And if you look at the numbers, there's actually 780 million people around the world right now that don't have access to clean drinking water, and two and a half billion people that don't have access to safe sanitation. So this project we really see as you know, one small drop in the bucket towards getting a better world where we actually have access to safe drinking water and sanitation. And so the project in Kenya, maybe Dalton can tell you a little bit more about those details. Sure, so this project is a spinoff of Engineers Without Borders. That's our organization that we're really introduced, what they really introduced our project. And the way it works is that it first started as a collegiate club or an organization where students can link up with professional engineers and then in turn go off into the developing world and to put in some sort of project that will increase the quality of life for those inhabitants or those people that were there. And so it started at the University of Colorado Boulder and then since then it's become an international organization. And back in 2009, the people of Isongo, Kenya, went ahead and said that the, we're, the water that we're drinking is making the children sick, and we want to improve the water quality here. And since 2009, it, UMBC picked up the project, but there was a, a slight lull for various reasons. But when Dr. Blaney actually came to campus back in 2011, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, he has experience with this water, water treatment and with Engineers Without Borders and was able to kind of revitalize the project from there. Mm -hmm. And so right now we've just completed a, uh, an assessment trip back in 2012 where we went and actually pulled samples of the water there and to really understand what type of raw water we were dealing with and what we would have to, into, um, would have to do to come back later on and to improve the water quality that's there. Mm -hmm. And could you explain what your role has been in the project and during your visit and sort of the roles of the different people who are involved? Because it's this very compelling partnership that you have. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, as a, at, at the root of everything, Engineers Without Borders is our student-run organization. Mm -hmm. And so my role when I first came in was, I mean, I guess I came in as a student that just really wanted to learn new science. And I decided to go ahead and to 
become the the grant guy. Mm -hmm. Really, I was dealing with money, writing grants, and as, as a whole, become a treasurer to really fund this project. Because that's a, the at the root of it, everything. The hardest part with this project was to to gain the funds to actually go to Kenya and to to dig deep into it. And so, uh, all the students, we come together. We did a very thorough research to understand what the uh, what we would need to do to go into a new country and to so what data we had to collect, um, and all these sort of questions that lead into um, to actually completing this project. And Dr. Blaney was there to, to lead us through this entire process, again, because of his experience with NGOs at Borders. Um, and then from there, uh, we once we got to Kenya, so once we had the money to actually take these flights and get down there, we wanted to head and to assess the water quality that's there. So we wanted to know what chemicals were um, the, what were present within the water that were, they were drinking, what bacteria what was there, and then really understand what ways we can come back to remove or to decrease or to increase those, quali um, those chemicals in that bacteria. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think I really see my role as the manager. So <laughs> I have some experience in these matters, but really I think EWB, as Dalton had mentioned, is a student-driven organization. And so I think at the heart of it, students need to drive these projects and make sure that they're moving forward, learning new techniques, learning new mm -hmm. science. You know, we've spun off an undergraduate research award project with this, so it is a technical project as well as a social and humanitarian project. Um, and so really I see my role as kind of bringing the students on board, making sure that they have the resources available to get into the science as well as the humanitarian aspects, and then pulling them back together because, you know, it is hard to work on a project like this. You know, not only is it a challenging project, it's a challenging project, but it's half a world away. And so in terms of really communicating with people on the ground, you know, it can be a little bit difficult. And so just kind of giving these guys some motivation, some inspiration every once in a while and making sure that they're setting project goals that are achievable and that they can actually work towards is really what I see my main role as. I think my secondary role is kind of reaching out to different partners on the ground over there as well as here. So in terms of finding new funding sources in the U.S., and in terms of finding new partners in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we actually did during the assessment trip <coughs> is we met with local government officials. We also went to a local university. So that was really great from my perspective because I got to sit back, interact with faculty in the sciences and the engineering mm -hmm. um, fields in Kenya. And I also got to see the students interact with Kenyan students, so their counterparts you know, that are living in this very different world. And I think going into it, they were maybe a little bit skeptical, what are we going to get out of this visit? Right. And coming out of it, I think they really enjoyed it, just seeing how different life is both there and here for a university student mm -hmm. and what that means for collaborating with each other and working together, that if we can bring those students on board as part of our EWB team, now we have them on the grounds that we can rely on when we're not able to travel. Mm -hmm. Because as Dalton mentioned, it's expensive to raise the funds to travel over there, mm -hmm. you know, more than once a year. Yeah. And it's really a different kind of partnership that you have going right, on. Right, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. And how do you think this has shaped your sense of what an engineering career means or your student's sense of, mm -hmm. what, of what an engineering career means? Yeah, so I guess my, the way I first got introduced into the project was really, okay, I'm going to meet new students. I'm going to just have fun learning new things in chemical engineering or in environmental engineering. And it really goes back, it, once, I've, once we're in the middle of the project, I find myself taking a step back and really delving in on, okay, how did I get here? How did I get to Kenya in the first place? And it's interesting because it really becomes a fact of we're a team that's going to try to solve a new problem. Mm -hmm. and, we're, and ultimately, we want to help a lot of different people. And so this really changed my mind as to how to introduce myself to these type of projects on the basis of this, I'm, I'm down there interested in the science. I'm interested in, okay, I need to remove bacteria. This is what needs to be done. But there's a wide range of different questions that are asked, wide range of th skill sets that I don't have as an engineer that I will ultimately learn from other students. And so actually this now was what was at first a technical project became a large collective, a university collective, mm -hmm. because now we have students that are in the visual arts that are helping us design pamphlets and to put on production so that we can move through this language barrier that's in Kenya between us and to really find what needs to be put into um, put into the project. So sure, we can get the science done easily, or not once it easily, it's a very, very tough, <laughs> tough project. Yeah, so, but it was also what the wide range of different aspects and vantage points in which we can attack the, the mm -hmm. true nature of this. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I think you know it's it's a great question. It's a very smart question that a lot of people don't always pick up on, because when we talk about this kind of work and this kind of project, oftentimes people's first response is, "Wow, that's really great that you're doing that for that community." Mm -hmm. But I always tell my students, you know, there's no such thing as a one-way street. Every street is two ways. <clears throat> and so in this case, you know, the other direction is what we're getting back from the community, and that goes for myself as well as the students. And I think Dalton hit the nail on the head. You know, engineering students don't always get these type of interactions mm -hmm. and don't really have a chance to say, okay, let me come out from behind the design table or let me come out from behind the research bench and actually think about how do I build this project across multiple scales, mm -hmm. technical, social, economic. These are all the reality for projects like this. And so I think for them to get those skill sets and then also just learn how to interact in a global environment. Um, which is huge, and when we were there, both Dalton and Chris Mullen, the other student that traveled, um, you know, both remarked, how did you learn how to do all these things? <laughs> you know, just interacting with people. You know, we would walk into someone's home, and we'd introduce ourselves, we'd speak to them in three or four different languages, mm -hmm. just to show that we were welcoming their culture, introduce ourselves, mm -hmm. say hello, you know, in one language, and then move to English and work with a translator for, you know, some of the more involved questions. Mm -hmm. um, so just little things like that I think you know, engineering students don't see very often and finding ways to build those into their experiences both here and in the future, in their future um, professions, mm -hmm. I think is very important um, you know, in terms of academic products. And what advice would you give since this is, you know, as you mentioned, can be daunting to someone mm -hmm. who's first approaching it um, to a faculty member or another student with a student organization who's trying to get this kind of work off the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. I think, you know, it's always very difficult, it's always very challenging, mm -hmm. and reaching out to groups that are doing this kind of work is often the best approach. Mm -hmm. So rather than kind of recreating the wheel, you know, there's a lot of work that's already been done. There's a lot of work that's been done wrong. And so finding those things, pulling them out, and finding those best practices to move forward and make sure that you're using a solution that actually works for the community mm -hmm. is very important. One of the things that we actually saw while we were there, we'd enter people's homes and we started asking them about their water practices and their sanitation and their hygiene. <clears throat> and when we were talking about, do you treat your water at home? Every person that we talked to looked over their shoulder and they looked up at the ceiling and they had this thing called, you know, I won't say the name, um, but they had a technology that an NGO had brought in as kind of a point of use device and none of them use it. So this is a great technical fit, but it doesn't fit the social or the economic constraints of this particular community. Mm -hmm. And so I think pulling some of that advice and really thinking what's been done in this area, what's not been done in this area, and can you pull those best practices out is the best approach. And to get there, you really have to be talking to people both on the ground and back here in the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from the student's perspective, I guess the best way to get a, a gauge of how we're really doing this project is to to, I guess to have an arsenal of students that are really, really engaged in the project and also to have an open line of communication between the faculty members, uh, the professional engineers that we're working with, and everybody that's really involved in the project so that we know when we take a step back from a meeting and all the students say, okay, I'm ready to, to gear up and get this thing completed, mm -hmm. or we have tasks that we kind of delegate is so that we have that open line of communication so that you, if you're swamped for a certain week with with assignments from other classes to really be able to say and not be don't, don't be sad in saying I cannot complete this this week mm -hmm. because by the end of the day it needs to well we're all engaged in the project we all want to get these things done we all want to bring clean water to Kenya but if your personal life is getting involved it's it's at the benefit of everybody if everybody knows that you can't engage or you can't complete a certain task and so that's one of the biggest things that I learned from this experience is that to truly be a part of the team, you have to be able to have an open line of communication with everybody so that nobody's stepping on each other's foot, you don't have mm -hmm. feelings and emotions being hurt within the process, and everybody is still engaged and motivated to, come to the, see that clean water comes to Kenya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And before we sign off, I know I'm very curious to find out, since you're a senior Meyerhoff scholar, what you're planning to do next. <laughs> yeah, so currently I'm choosing between uh, MD-PhD programs. Uh, and we'll see how that kind of goes in. It's not really clean water in its essence, but uh, the biggest thing that I'm pulling away from this experience is really not only being 
motivated by the science that's going on, but also the fact is that ultimately I'm trying to help another person and improve quality of life. And so all the things that I've learned in this process of going to Kenya, interacting with everybody that was there, playing soccer with the children, and mm -hmm. it really pulled on my heartstrings and it makes me really happy to know that I'm actually, I got something started on campus and being involved in the project at, at a whole. So that's kind of how it builds into my future aspect now. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Dalton and Lee. Thanks for Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.